to another episode of Above the Fold. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I know I usually launch into tutorials on different eye looks, but today I'm actually going to be going over my top five ways that you can really rock your monolids. So yeah, um, if you haven't yet subscribed, please do subscribe. I'm really building up the channel, really diversifying the content. Um, I'm even thinking about expanding beyond just purely tutorials on makeup and going into other types of content. So yeah, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. And as usual, before we get into it, I just wanted to show off another accessory that I'm wearing today. I recently just got it and I think it's really cute. I wanted to share it with everybody, but there are these hoop earrings with a little heart in them. Super cute, um, super flirty, cute. And actually, they're also by the Lucky Brand, and in my previous video, I was showcasing the safety pin heart earrings as well that are really cute, and they're also by Lucky, so I guess I'm just really liking Lucky accessories recently. So yeah, let's just dive right into this top five list. So um, before we launch into the top five list, just to give people um, some definition and context around what is a monolith for some of you who may not know, it's just eyelids that lack a visible crease, such as mine, and it's most prominent um, amongst East Asians. So yeah, just a little bit of definition. And also for my top five list, I'm actually not going in any particular order. Um, although I will say that number one is intentionally number one for a reason, but everything else two through five, it's kind of, um, kind of random. So yeah, let's start with number five. So I think the first thing you got to do is invest in a good primer potion. I use Urban Decay primer potion, and I think Too Faced also has a really good one as well. Um, but I think it's a shadow insurance, but yeah, um, essentially because when you have a monolid, your lids fold over the lash line, so they're just more prone to smudges. So just to keep your makeup intact throughout the day, um, putting primer over it creates a smoother base, keeps your makeup intact, um, especially if you don't have the luxury of reapplying and checking up on it all day. And also, um, I've noticed that with primer versus without primer, your shadows just look more pigmented. So yeah, um, definitely invest in a good primer potion. And something that I like to do is I also like to put some eyeshadow or color on my lower lash line as well. Um, I've done it in a lot of my videos and I think it just makes the overall look, look more cohesive and um, it just makes the eyes look more interesting and colorful when you have some color on the bottom lash line, just a personal preference as well. Um, but yeah, if that's the case and you um, also see your lost smears, I would also recommend putting some primer potion on your lower lash line prior to putting on the shadows as well. So yeah, that's number five. Let's move on to number four. So number four, I would say is investing in a good um liner liquid liner in my in my case um, i like my clinique pretty easy liquid lining pen and i also like the stilo one and the lorac pro liner is pretty good as well but for me what constitutes a good liquid liner is if it has a very precise tip um, i think it just makes it easier to have control and to um, draw an extended liner look, which I typically like to do. And I find that when I use liquid liner, it not only makes um, my, it creates this very aesthetically pleasing um, eye shape by creating the extended liner. And it also makes my lashes look fuller. And I'm not exactly blessed with full long lashes. So any help I can get, I will take. So yeah, so those are the benefits and also even better if your liner is waterproof as well. 
Um, again, goes back to the whole primer potion situation because our lids sit over the lash line um, or fold over the lash line. They're just more prone to smudges throughout the day. And so anything that can keep your makeup intact and free from smudges, such as waterproof formulas, I, I personally gravitate towards them. So yeah, and another thing I would like to point out while on the subject of liners is that um, just because when you have um, a monolid, you often have to draw a thicker line. So what I typically like to do is I like to trace over the liner after I've drawn it with um, a light colored um, eye pencil. I use the Urban Decay eye pencil, 24-7 pencil in the color Stash, which is this pretty green or mossy green color. And personally for me, I just feel like after I do that, the line looks less harsh, especially when you um, close your eyes. There's just like this thick line that you have to draw so that um, compared to non monolids when you open them, that you can still see the liner. So just to diminish the harshness and really soften up the look, I oftentimes will trace over it with this green um, eye pencil. And I think it just also brings out another sh color within my eyes and kind of transforms the eye color a bit as well. But yeah, this is my personal preference. I just like to soften up the look and I think it look makes the look more, makes the look more interesting and also I feel like it helps make my lashes stand out more too as well just because the contrast of your black mascara against this green mossy green eye pencil shade rather than the um, thick black liner so yeah just a personal preference I don't know if anyone else does it but I like to do that okay so moving on to number three number three I would have to say is investing in holy grail mascara and also a holy grail eyelash curler. So for me, um, this is something I struggle with, finding a good mascara. As mentioned before, I was not blessed with thick, long lashes, so any help that I can get in that department, I will take. So um, what I found worked really well for me is a Shiseido eyelash curler. It really helps boost my lashes and curl them and hold the curl, and also, um, I personally like the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. I'm not completely married to it. Oh, I also get in the waterproof formula, just to clarify. Going back to the whole, because your eyelids are more prone to smudging, any help I can take in that department to keep my makeup intact, I will take it. But I'm not completely married to the Better Than Sex Mascara. It's been the one that I found ha that has really elongated my lashes and um, curled them and kind of made them stick up so it's the one that i currently am religiously devoted to just because i've seen the most positive results with but i'm always on the lookout for anything else that i think is going to add volume and lengthen and hold a curl and also better than sex mascara is not that cheap so if i can find a mascara that i think is a cheaper alternative and i see even better results i will probably gravitate towards it but as of right now i've seen the most results um with the better than sex mascara so that's what i would personally recommend anyone um with monoliths right now but i'm always on the lookout for something even better um okay so moving on to number two number two i would say is play around with different application styles and find the best one that suits your monolid. I think um, when I was growing up and also um, just when I started watching YouTube tutorials, I didn't find a lot of um, influencers that had the same eye shape as myself. So I felt like a lot of the application styles that they were talking about didn't really apply to me. Like a lot of them was like blending on the crease, etc. but I didn't have a crease. So it's really just, um, I think what's really great about makeup, it's really experimenting and finding what works for you because whatever works for you is not really going to work for someone else. So just taking that time and experimenting with different application styles. But I will say that um, one thing that, like the common thread that holds um, together all the different monolid application styles is what essentially you're trying to do, like with the vertical grain, for example, and also with the fade crease, you're really trying to create this illusion of depth. 
So that's what, for example, the vertical gradient, you're starting off with a foundational color and you're putting the transitional and then you're getting like a darker shade as you get closer to the lash line. So a lot of this really creating this illusion of depth and kind of with the faking a crease look, you're carving out that fake crease and contouring. So that's a common thread that kind of holds together all the looks, um, all the different application styles. But yeah, definitely play around and see what works for you because whatever works for you is not necessarily going to work for someone else. And I think a great starter eyeshadow kit for anyone that's like looking to put together a natural um, everyday mono lid look, um, I would highly recommend the Too Faced Chocolate Bar Palette. It's just filled with all these um, neutral colors and really shimmery golds and browns and I think they are great if you want to start off with some vertical gradient application look for a monolid and you're looking for just an easy starter palette that you can use to put together looks that you can wear every day to work or school. So yeah this is um and it smells like chocolate too so this is a palette that I would highly recommend anyone just starting out and trying to um, experiment with different application styles. So yeah, and now for the drum roll for number one, I would have to say is self-confidence. And I know this is a buzzword that you hear every day from everyone about, you know, just loving yourself and having high self-confidence, but I cannot stress enough how accurate and how important it really is. Um, growing up, as I mentioned, I, I didn't really see a lot of people with monolids and a lot of the tutorials, a lot of the magazines, celebrities, everyone had the crease. And actually I didn't really notice I was in any way different from these influencers and these celebrities until I learned that I lacked the crease. And definitely my self-confidence really plummeted. I felt like what was the point in trying out makeup and I just felt like I, I wasn't like aesthetically pleasing, like I wasn't attractive, etc. And it definitely took a hit and I felt like I didn't even really want to experiment with makeup actually. It just felt like I could never try out and apply makeup because I didn't have this crease. Like I felt like I was really lacking something. And um I think Fortunately, there's more diversity within the influencers now and I myself have really built up self-confidence. I've come to believe and think that my eye shape and my uh, my monoliths are really unique and beautiful and honestly, I see it almost as a blessing. I have this, this huge canvas that I can use to explore different application styles and different colors and I feel really blessed and I think they make me look unique and I really embrace it and I really love them. So I think it's really not an understatement that you should have high self-confidence. It really shines through and it, it's, it, it just, it really shines through and um, it's really noticeable when someone has high self-confidence versus someone who doesn't. So yeah, it's, I think number one, the best way for you to rock your monoliths is really believing and embracing the fact that you have this um, unique feature that makes you beautiful in your own individual way. But yeah, so that's my top five list um, of ways you can rock your monoliths. I hope you really enjoyed this video. I hope you take away some tips and tricks that you can use um, when you are setting out and creating your own um, look. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and please subscribe if you haven't and thanks for watching. Bye.